Hey everyone, it's Jared here today, and today I'm going to talk about some important things that are hopefully going to help you in your drumming. Now, writing lessons like this is it's actually really helpful for me, as I'm no different than you or anyone else. I make all of these mistakes, and I'm always looking to improve. So, when I write these types of things, it really forces me to research topics and look at myself in the mirror to see where I can get better. Now, I also talk to hundreds of drummers each week, and I watch their videos to give them feedback, and I'm seeing some recurring issues that I want to bring up here. So if you're perfect and you don't make any mistakes, great, but if you are like me, then you have work to do. So what I'd recommend you do is just choose a few of these issues and just work towards improving them. And as always, like myself and the Drumio team, we're here to help in any way we can. Now the first one is they don't practice a healthy foundation of theory and technique. Now if you've been hitting a ceiling in your playing, one thing that could be causing that is your technical or theoretical boundaries. You need to learn the basics of movement when you play the drums, basics of grip, rebound, sight reading. You don't need to become a virtuoso, but it really helps to know a little bit your, how your kit is set up ergonomically, playing with a metronome and other foundational concepts, they can have a huge effect on your ability to learn new things. Now on the flip side of that, if you only become obsessed with things that you can measure, it's a dangerous thing, and that is the second mistake. Now music is an art form. It's not always supposed to be measured in its quality or quantity. The quality is subjective. Okay, you could be a technical magician on the drum set, but no one would want to listen to your drumming. So if you can play 16th notes at 300 beats per minute, what does that really mean? Does that mean you're a good musician? I think it means you can go fast on the drums, but it's not really an indication of your ability to play music or make art. So make sure you always keep a balance between practicing technique and musicality. This is, that's a huge one for me, by the way. The next thing that drummers always do is they try to buy results, but it ends up being shelf help. Now in the past when we were selling DVDs and books, I saw this more and it was truly shelf help. So I do enjoy when students purchase the products from us because it allows me to invest and reach more drummers, but I really don't want Drumio to turn into a business model like a gym membership. Most gyms honestly wouldn't even be able to function if every member was actively using the facilities. Okay, Drumio is not like that. We want each and every student to get the most value out of their membership. And if you use one of the other online lesson sites or a private teacher or anything else, know that there isn't any correlation between how much a drummer spends on their education and their actual skill level. Information as it relates to drumming, which requires skill and knowledge to play, is useless without action. So focus on getting the right information, the right support, and surrounding yourself with a positive and motivating community. Then get to work and start practicing. Now another mistake drummers make is that they think they can just teach themselves and they don't even need a teacher. And this might be slightly controversial because we are on YouTube here, and in the YouTube era, everyone thinks they can just learn anything all on their own. Now, I'm guilty of this as well, as sometimes I just wanna watch a YouTube video and figure something out, but really, it's nice to have a teacher who can give you feedback that's personalized to exactly what you're doing. And this is something we've done a lot at Drumio through our student focus section, where students will submit a video, we will film ourselves giving them feedback, and then they can take that to use it to improve on the drums. Now I know there's always a financial barrier to some of this because you can't afford a private teacher or you can't afford a membership to Drumio, but I do believe hugely in private lessons and online drum lesson sites like Drumio that offer an immense amount of ongoing support. The next mistake is that they think they don't need to learn how to read sheet music. Another one that's gonna be a little bit controversial because everyone's gonna reference Dennis Chambers and talk about how he's never read sheet music and he's one of the greatest drummers alive, but like, I think there's just benefits to knowing how to read. And I always relate it back to reading like books or just words. Like, would you like to know how to talk but not know how to read? Now obviously one is better than none, but wouldn't both be better than one? ¿Por qué no las dos? Now you don't need to become a virtuoso at sight reading, but knowing the basics can really help you memorize new drumming vocab as well as make it easy to share 
musical ideas with other musicians. So I really encourage you, if you don't have a high level of reading, that's fine. Just get a basic level going so you can share ideas and learn more things faster. Now the next mistake is that students practice for longer sessions instead of more shorter sessions. So there's data on practice session length, but I'm not really gonna pretend to be all scientific, but I know what this has done for me. So I'm just gonna give you a shared experience here. I used to practice for two to three hours at a time, and now I have kids, I have other responsibilities here at work at Drumeo, and I simply just don't have that much extra time. So I don't always just want to practice. Sometimes I just wanna sit down and play and have fun. So from what I've read online, it's better to have 20 to 60 minute blocks rather than two to three hour blocks of practice sessions. Anything after two hours and you're just gonna be getting diminishing returns. So for me, if I practice more than once per day, it will be around 30 minutes for each session. So you can let me know what you do. What works best for you? Do you agree with me that you should practice more shorter sessions or you're totally cool doing longer sections? Leave your comment below. The next mistake I see is more from adults. Now, a lot of adult students use self-deprecation as a hedge just in case they fail. Now, I know starting an instrument later in life or picking the instrument back up later in life can be daunting and it, you can't have this fear of failure because learning something new or trying to get better at something new later in life, it is challenging. And it's, you know, the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but we have so many great students who are learning later in life. And as adults, we just have limited time to practice. We have jobs, we have other commitments, so we have to understand that getting to the point of our drumming being somewhere where we are feel comfortable presenting it to an audience, it's just gonna take a little bit longer. And you might be a little bit more self-conscious about it, and so you might feel that making self-deprecating comments about yourself and your drumming is a good way to make yourself feel better, but I'd really encourage you to try not to do it. Just try and practice hard, put in as much time as you can, and be comfortable with the result you're getting. Okay, the next mistake relates to gear. So many people try to buy their way to a good sounding drum set. But I will tell you right now, I have around 30 or 40 kits, and the factors that go into making your drums sound good are the following, okay? The room that you're in, the drum heads, how you tune them, the sticks, okay? Wood or vinyl, what is the vinyl tip, plastic tip? The drummer, like how you actually hit the drums, and then the recording gear in there. So Taylor's sitting over there, he's making this kit sound a certain way, and that way is the way he likes to hear drums. So you see what I didn't say there? I didn't really talk much about the shell quality or whether it's a wrap, or whether it's a painted finish. And I'm really not saying that stuff doesn't matter at all, but I'm confident that if I did blind tests with you, I don't think you'd be able to identify a $500 kit compared to a $5,000 kit correctly 50% of the time, if we ran like 100 or 1,000 tests. Now, this is coming from someone who loves high-end drums. Okay, like I said, I have like 30 or 40 kits, and many of them are high-end drum sets. So. Don't get me wrong here. I'm like the biggest uh, proponent of gear acquisition syndrome in the world, but you have to keep in mind that you're not necessarily paying for a high-end sound. The drum quality is only one-tenth of that. So focus on really having dynamic limb independence. Focus on developing tuning, your tuning skills. The room treatment, okay, and staying really loose on the drums so they resonate freely when you hit them. Now another mistake drummers make is that they try and learn too many things at one time. And there's a business term I love, and it's that pigeonholes are the ones stuffed with cash. Now it's also true when learning something. Focus on niching down and focus on learning one thing at a time for a short amount of time and then moving on to the next thing really, really quickly. So choose three songs, two techniques, and a few new beats and fills to learn. And once you got those down, move on to other things. And when I say get those down, it means you can play them off the cuff. The vocabulary has just become a part of your drumming sound and feel. At Drumio, we've worked on something huge that I'm super excited about that really helps simplify this process for you. Now, growing up, when I first started, I was 15, 16 when I first started, and the mistake I always made was rushing my drum fills. I had so many 
band leaders tell me like every fill you're speeding up. So I was the worst at this and I, I, honestly, I honestly still struggle at it sometimes. Benny Greb discusses this in his drumming lesson which I really think you should check out if you haven't yet. So really focus on playing with a metronome while you practice your fills. Practice all different tempos so you don't just get comfortable in one zone. Now another mistake is that so many drummers they practice exclusively on an electric kit and think that those skills directly transfer to an acoustic kit, and they don't. It's simple as that. Electric kits don't rebound the same. They don't set up in the same way. They're much more compact, making things easier to reach. And so I see so many drummers who will primarily play on an electric, and they go to play an acoustic, and they almost have no dynamics. They're used to just using volume knobs to make the snare or bass drum louder. So if you practice exclusively on an electric kit, get a good one that allows you to play dynamically and responds to how you're playing if you hit the drum harder or if you hit the drum softer. Now if you know you're gonna be playing an electric and an acoustic, set up the kits in the most similar way possible so you can easily switch between both. There are also some newer electric kits coming out where the toms have more of a natural feeling. So when you hit like the four tom, you want that stick to really sink in and not get a ton of rebound. Another mistake I see a lot is that drummers think that learning stick tricks makes them a good drummer, and it really doesn't. Stick tricks make non-drummers think you're a good drummer until they hear you play with a band and the feel of the music is just terrible. So you should only do stick tricks once you have locked in the groove and it doesn't take away anything from that. Then add in the flair and the crowd is gonna love you even more. So there are some mistakes that I see so many drummers making. What mistakes do you make when you're practicing or playing live? What things have helped you make less mistakes? Now I know I didn't get them all in this video and I just love to read your feedback. So please share it in the comments below so we can all learn from each other. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you again very soon.